Hi, and welcome to the channel. My name is Dr. Rute, and I'm a medical doctor. Today, we're talking about a very important topic. We're talking about cervical cancer. We're going to look at what is cervical cancer? What are the signs and symptoms of cervical cancer? What are the risks of getting cervical cancer? And how can you help prevent getting cervical cancer? If you're new to the channel, this is the first video on the channel. We're going to have more videos talking about different health topics. So please do subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell so that you can be alerted every time we get a new video on the channel. So what is cancer? Cancer is where the cells in a particular part of the body grow in an uncontrollable way. And by doing that, they can stop the function of that organ of that particular part of the body and they can also grow to the point where they invade or go into other parts of the body um, closer to where they started from but it can also spread to the rest of the body as well what is the cervix so the cervix is a small structure in between the womb and the vagina so it's got a tiny hole in the middle and that's where the sperm would go through and then it's that same tiny hole where if you're having a period for example that's where the blood will come through out into the vagina and also it's the same structure that will will say dilate or get bigger to allow a head to come through and the uh, and the rest of the the baby to come out of if you're giving birth vaginally so cervical cancer is cancer of that structure it's close to the vagina it's close to the womb it's also close to your bladder which are close which is close to your kidneys and also close to your intestines so it's a tiny structure that if you get cervical cancer and it remains untreated or if the cancer grows uncontrollably it can spread to other parts of the body other organs and can spread to the rest of the body why do we talk about it why is it important that we're aware about it and why is it important that we're aware of how to reduce our risk of getting cervical cancer because people can die from cervical cancer Globally, if you look at the statistics in 2020, around 320,000 women around the world died from cervical cancer. And cervical cancer is one of the few cancers in the world where we can do a lot to prevent it. And also, it is one of the most successfully treatable forms of cancer as long as it is detected early and managed effectively. I know that people from around the world might watch this video. The statistics are that cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer in women in the world. I'm a medical doctor in the UK and I know that the lifetime risk of getting cervical cancer in women in the UK is 1 in 135. I'm also Zambian and I know that in Zambia cervical cancer is the most common cancer and that just goes to show why it is so important for us to be aware about it and why it is so important for us to do what we can do to help to prevent getting cervical cancer. So what are the symptoms and what are the signs of cervical cancer? Now the most common symptom and sign is no symptom or sign at all. So you could have cervical cancer and not have any symptoms at all and that is why the preventative measures that we're going to talk about at the end come into play. So what are the other signs and symptoms? So you could have abnormal vaginal bleeding. So that is bleeding in between your period or bleeding after sexual intercourse. Also, if you've gone through the menopause and you are bleeding, that could also be a sign of cervical cancer. Other symptoms include pain during sex. It could be chronic pelvic pain it could be bloodstain discharge also although rare some women can present with signs and symptoms of advanced cervical cancer for example it could have spread to other organs like the kidneys so they might present with kidney failure might present with really bad vaginal bleeding or problems with the bladder and those might be signs and symptoms of advanced cervical cancer so what causes cervical cancer the most common cause is hpv HPV stands for human papilloma virus. It is a sexually transmitted infection and it is the most common sexually transmitted infection in the reproductive system. It is very common that approximately 80% of sexually active individuals would have had HPV at some point in their life. 
studies have shown that 99.7% of individuals who had cervical cancer tested positive for HPV. In summary, we say that HPV causes greater than 95% of cervical cancer. And so if that's the case, what is the risk of getting HPV? So if HPV is a sexually transmitted infection, then we now need to look at what are the risks of getting sexually transmitted infections. So in this case, having unprotected sex increases the risk of getting HPV. And by sex, we mean oral sex, anal sex, vaginal sex, or skin to skin contact of the genital areas. In addition to that, the more sexual partners you have, the more you are at risk of getting HPV and also the age at first sexual intercourse. So the younger you are, the more that increases your risk. Also the likelihood that the woman's partner or their partners may have been infected with HPV. And that can also be determined by the number of partners they've had. The other group of women who are at risk are those women who are immunocompromised. So that could be because they are on immunosuppressants, so they might have had an organ transplant or they have inflammatory bowel disease, or they are women living with HIV. Studies have found that women living with HIV are six times more likely to develop cervical cancer than those who don't. So we've talked a lot about the different aspects of cervical cancer and we're almost at the end of the video. Now, what can you do to help reduce your risk? There are a number of things. One of them is practicing safe sex. Another thing is taking part in your country specific cervical cancer screening program. Another way is through vaccinations and other things such as quitting smoking if you smoke, other things such as exercising and having a balanced diet in order to help boost and support your immune system and many more. I will share with you some useful links if you want to know more. In the next video we're going to talk about the cervical cancer screening program. If you've never been for a smear before what can you expect? Also we'll have more videos coming up on what is the HPV vaccine and loads more other videos as well. If you've learned something or two please give it a thumbs up and most importantly please share the video. And when I say share not just to women please share this video to men as well. It's important that men are aware about cervical cancer for many reasons. One of the reasons, for example, is if a family, a father or and a mother are discussing whether to consent to the vaccination of their child, this is a useful video for them to watch. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time.